Hey there, rock stars. Welcome back to another Metallica guitar lesson. Today, we're going to learn how to play Creeping Death on guitar. Just a couple of points I wanted to make before we really get going. When I provide the tab and I do the performances at the head of every chapter, I'm always basing them off of the album version. However, if you really want to get into the song and learn a lot about it, then throughout the video, I also will talk about the live version when there's been significant changes made. And I'll provide the tab for those live variations as well when applicable. So if you're just skimming through, grabbing the tabs at the head of every chapter and moving on, I recommend that you watch a little more of the video because you're going to come away with a deeper understanding of the song. You'll be able to play it better and you'll know exactly what's going on. So let's get into this Creeping Death guitar lesson. The track opens up, chugging away on our low E string. So put a palm mute on that low E string, we're going to hit it five times, one and two and three, and then we're going to come up to the seventh fret of the A string and hit another E power chord. Okay, so it's all just E, one and two and three, four. And then second uh, time around here, we go one and two and three, four and. So we just do the same thing, except we slide down a whole step to the D on the fifth fret of the A string. And we do that twice, and then we do a, basically the same thing, except one more hit here. So exact same thing, just repeat each chord. Um, and then we play that twice as well. And then after that's played a couple of times, in the left-hand channel, what would be James's part, we get a harmony guitar line introduced. And I'll go over the, what's done on the album as well as how they do it live because it's slightly different. On the album, there's actually even a third guitar layered in there that really beefs up the harmony. Um, so uh, let's tackle the album first here. Uh, we have that same rhythm. Uh, but James in the left hand channel is going to hit the 9th and the 10th frets on the A string. Okay, so we start on the 10th fret and then come down to the 9th. Okay, and that's uh, the first guitar part. Uh, and then there's another guitar that's layered up on top of that yet again that it hits the 9th and the 7th frets on the D string. And then that goes. Okay, so really what we have with the two guitars together there is the third and the fifth of each chord. So the 10th fret, G is the third, the minor third of the E minor chord, and the B is the fifth of that. Uh, so when Kirk's guitar, it's an E power chord, then in the left hand channel, we've got the third and the fifth to harmonize with that power chord. And then moving down, we have the major third and fifth of the D power chord to outline a D major chord. So we're just moving from an E minor to a D major. And so that's easier to see if we put the root on. If you put the E on the 12th fret of the low string, you can see how we just have root, third, fifth. We're just playing the third and the fifth out of that arpeggio. And then if we put our D down on the 10th fret of our low string, you can see how we've got the, thir the third and the fifth of that arpeggio. So that's all that harmony is doing, is just playing chord tones. Now live, uh, it, Hammett keeps the ba uh, underlying rhythm going that. And then Hetfield moves up and plays the third of those chords. And uh, sometimes, usually he will just play one note. He'll just do the, the third on the 10th and the ninth frets. 
right? He plays it like that. But sometimes I've also seen him play octaves. So it, it, with the octave version, you would just want to play the 10th fret on the A string and then get the 12th fret on the G string with your pinky and make sure that D string in between is muted out. So you're just doubling up the same note, right? So the third of each chord. Coming down to the ninth fret. So you'd have the ninth and then the 11th on the G string. Just sliding that same shape. And that's how they perform that live. And then we get into... Um, the main riff of the song. And that's preceded by three power chords where we start on the fifth fret of the low string, that's an A, come down a whole step to G, and then just drop your first finger one to get a D over F sharp is what that would technically be. But we just have that one, two, three, four, and then we're into our main riff. And that main riff is really just all chugging on an E power chord again. Um, we're gonna palm mute two open E's and then barring the second fret on strings five and four. So it's really an E power chord that we're just kind of splitting up. So, okay, that's our first measure. One and two and three and four and. So uh, do two chugs on E, and then the second frets, back on two chugs on E, and then second frets, one chug on E, second fret, and now two chugs on E starting our second measure, uh, second frets and one more chug on E. So that whole thing so far, one and two and three and four and one and two and. And then to finish this off, we get the second and third fret on the A string. And then we're gonna start on the second fret, hammer to three, two, zero. And that's four E and up. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four E and up. And then that just repeats. Okay, um, and then we play that eight times right off the bat, and we get into this, uh, that, that little thing. And again, they play this differently live now, but on the album, what we do is we chug two E's, and then a G power chord on the third fret of your low string. And then repeat that two E's and G. So we play that twice. And then we go two open E's, and then just hit the second fret on that low string for two and three and four and, okay? And then repeat that. Uh, but on the album, every time this comes around, that second repeat is a little bit different. They don't just play that straight. What they do is... They put a little pull off at the end of that measure. One and two and three and four and one. Okay, so uh, start off the same, two palm mutes on that open E, and then come to that second fret, two and three and four, but now on that last eighth note of the bent measure, we're gonna hit the full F sharp power chord and then pull off to two open strings. Um, and then what that means is it kind of messes up our repeat for the third time around because you're not gonna be able to do two chugs on that open E because we've pulled off for beat one, right? We've went four and one. So you're only gonna get one chug to for that repeat. One, uh, so it, that kind of second repeat through that section is gonna go like this. Okay, see how that repeats? Uh, I'll count it out really slow. One and two, three and four, one and two and three and four and one and two, three and four. Okay, and then they just put that on the album, it's just that second time through, and then the third and fourth repeats is just the same. Okay, so all four repeats together. And once again, this riff has changed a little bit live through the years. A um, uh, couple of noticeable differences that they've made um, is doing away with two E palm mutes. Instead of chugging two E's, they go just one E palm mute directly to the F sharp. So then they go directly there. One and two and three and four and. 
And then they've also done away with just chugging on the bottom note and they kind of just chug the full power chord, the, the two strings at the same time to make it heavier and chunkier. Um, then uh, Hetfield has kind of introduced a couple of things too. On the second repeat, he'll do some harmonics around the third fret area. Uh, and then he also does this uh, when we come to the F sharp, that measure. He, he's put in a couple of little hammers there. Um, so the, let's just tackle those harmonics first of all. So that repeat, you just go. Okay, and so you just do eighth note still, but just go one and two and three and four. And just kind of slide your finger lightly touching the string around that third fret area. Just get random harmonics. Right? Um, and uh, then you don't even have to do that the whole measure. Uh, he likes to slide on beat four where it would be like. Like that. Um, and then getting into this uh, um, the hammers that he likes to do, just do hammers on beats three and four. One and two and three and four and. So yeah, really slow. Uh, one, two, three and four. One and two and three and four and. Okay, so it's a three and four and. Might take you a little while to get that uh, up to speed just to feel that timing there. Um, but okay, here's Hetfield's part live through that section. Okay, and then we play the verse riff a couple more times, and then we get into this E power chord that we ring out. So we play that verse riff a couple times. Hit an E power chord, let that ring out, and then three more power chord stabs into the verse. So second fret of the A string, a B, up to C sharp, fourth fret, down to F sharp on the second fret of the low string. And then into our verse riff that repeats through the verse. And then uh, we get into the chorus section is the next rhythms that we have to talk about. So here we go with that. We'll analyze the chorus in four measure sections. It splits up into four measure phrases quite nicely. Uh, and each four measure phrase starts with an E power chord. So the first four measures starts with this open E power chord. And the next four, the, the rest of the four measure sections will start with an E power chord an octave higher on the seventh fret of the A string. So let's talk about the first four measures here first. We start with an open E power chord and let that ring for five beats. And then we palm mute three open E's, followed by a C power chord, third fret of the A string, up to the fifth fret D, okay? Then we slide up to the eighth fret, F, and then we start our next four measure chunk with an E power chord on the seventh fret of the A string. Okay, so the trickiest part is gonna be the second measure there, where we get, Okay, because those are off beats, two and three and four and. And at the fast tempo that the song is, uh, close to, you know, around 200 beats per minute, to get those off beats really accurate might be the most challenging part of this chorus section. Um, but, so the first four measures is going to look like this. Okay, and then we start our next four sections, uh, uh, four measures. Now, when we hit these E power chords, up on the seventh fret, you feel free to let this open E underneath it ring too. Get a nice bigger power chord that way, nice fuller sound. So we'll ring that power chord for our next group of four measures for five beats and repeat this three open E palm mutes and our C to D power chord movement. And now this time though, we'll end the four measures by going F on the eighth fret up to G on the 10th fret and then starting over for our next four measures. So the 
the next four measures uh, of the chorus, the second group of four, is going to go like this. Okay, and then we start our next group of four. And our third group of four is the exact same as the first group. We're just substituting this higher E power chord instead of starting on the open E. So it's going to look like this. And then we start our last group of four, which is more of the same. We just ring this for five beats. Repeat our C to D power chord movement. And then we finish this section off with those three power chords that we had in the intro to get into our verse. So B on the second fret of the A string, up to C sharp, fourth fret, down to the second fret of the low string. And then we're into our verse riff again. Uh, so that's the chorus, how it is performed on the album. Live, virtually the same. As far as I can tell, Hammett is doing what's uh, the way it was recorded on the album. And Hetfield has changed his part a little bit. Um, notable things uh, that he's done lie in the 8th, 9th, and 12th measures. Okay, so everything else, he virtually plays it the same as the album, except he doesn't do any of these palm mutes when we get to the C and the Ds. He just has removed those. And I imagine uh, he just has removed those to make it easier on himself to play and sing at the same time. So I don't think there's any significance behind that. But the significant changes that he has made to the chorus, um, in the eighth measure, he's... Uh, those uh, where we go up to the F and the G, he strums those twice like that now. And I also have seen him do octaves. Right, so instead of doing an F and a G power chord, just move your pinky up a string, so you get two Fs and two Gs. Right, so it would be. And then, instead of starting the third rotation up on the E power chord, he drops down to this low one. And then. And now, instead of coming up to this F, in measure 12, like is on the album, he comes down and goes and starts the next group of four on the low E again. Okay, so if all that's confusing, don't worry, I'll just play this through slow with tab, Hetfield's way of playing it live. Here we go. Not a lot of new material to talk about in regards to the rhythm that's going on underneath the solo. It basically just cycles through all the riffs that we've already talked about, but during the first half of the solo, there is something slightly different that's going on. So let's just talk about that. We start with the verse riff, but we only play it one time. And then we take that riff and we basically just move it up one string set from E to A. So we just play the exact same thing except on an A power chord. So start off by palm muting your A string and then just do that same rhythm. Okay, but at the end, we just alter that riff by doing uh, uh, an A power chord on beat three, followed by a C power chord on beat four. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. And then you would just play that whole thing four times. So it, the rhythm rotation looks like this. Okay. 
Okay, so those four measures you repeat four times and then you get into what I would call the pre-chorus riff and then the chorus riff. <laughs> that stuff. Um, and then the only other thing to talk about is at the very end of the solo, we get, we've played the whole chorus riff and we, so we end it like this. It, uh, those three power chords that would signify getting back into the verse, but we just end with an E power chord. Now, the original recording of the song, it's obscured a little bit because there is an overdub there um, that it just sounds like it's an E power chord up here on the 12th fret and they just slide it really slow for what would be the, a whole measure. Um, and that's an overdub though, because if I pan left and right, it's the exact same sound in both channels. Um, but that uh, the original underlying rhythm is ending on an E power chord stab. Um, because we'll get into the solo too, and that solo also kind of abruptly ends with the overdub happening at the very end there. Um, so that is the rhythm for the solo. And now we can get into the bridge rhythm. The bridge is heavy and rocking and really quite simple. So we start with this E power chord up at the seventh fret of the A string. And once again, when you hit that E power chord, feel free to let that low E string ring underneath it. Beefs it up and always sounds great. So hit that E power chord, four open E palm mutes, and then come up one half step to the eighth fret F, down to the fifth fret D, back up to E. Okay, so. Then repeat your four uh, E palm mutes, come up to the 10th fret G, down to the 8th fret F, and then we can repeat the whole thing. So it's a four measure rotation that plays eight times, so it's going to sound like this. Play that eight times, and then get out of that with the verse riff. Play the verse riff twice. and just end it with an E stab, power chord stab, really quick. And then to get back into our next verse, we have a new rhythmic figure. Okay, so we palm mute these. On the album, these are you know full power chords, heavily palm muted. He hits an open E power chord up to F sharp on the second fret, up to the third fret G, and then jump up to the fifth fret D and take the palm mute off. And then we get into our verse riff. Live, he doesn't do that full power chords. He just goes, just walking up with the low, with just the root notes of those power chords. So open E, F sharp, G, and then he uses his pinky to grab the D on the fifth fret of the A string. Okay, that's the only difference live with any of that that he does during the solo section. Um, there might be a couple of minor variations in there, but. Uh, nothing significant enough to really start talking about in in this video um so let's talk about the outro and that basically covers all of the rhythms <laughs> Hi everyone, sorry for the interruption, but I think that this playing clip was a little bit too long. It triggered a copyright claim on the video. So I'm just splitting it up into two sections. So sorry if it's a little confusing, but just imagine that it's all one big section. And in the future, you know, lesson learned, I'll try to organize the songs so that my clips are a little bit shorter and then we won't have to go through this. But uh, let's carry on. <laughs>
Lots to talk about in the outro, lots of new stuff going on here. Uh, some new riffs that we haven't encountered yet. So we get into the outro. Kind of the same as we would get out of any chorus. Uh, we play those three power chords out of that last chorus. And then we start the verse riff, but we only play the first half, the first measure. One and two and three and four and. And we stop it there. And then we, we hit those second frets on the A and the D strings on beat four at the end of that second measure. Um, and then we repeat that again. But instead of ending on the second frets, we just come up to the barred third frets on the A and the D. Okay, and then to repeat, we hit the open A and D strings. Okay, and then that repeats. Okay, now that plays twice. And then we get this harmonized line that comes in. So Hammett takes the higher harmony and he plays on the 15th fret on the B string. We bend the 15th fret up a whole step and release it and then come down to 13 and 12. And now they actually shift. So you wanna shift down to the 12th fret and raise that a half step and release down to the 10th fret and then up to the 13th fret. Okay, so that's Hammett's part. And now Hetfield does the lower harmony live. And so that's on the G string, bend 14 and release it, down to 12 and 11. And then come down, bend 11 half a step, down to nine and back up to 12. Right, so those two guitars together create that harmony line that you're hearing. And uh, then that occurs for a couple of rotations and then that harmony line keeps going while the rhythm changes. And that comes in. So uh, we hit palm mute a, an open E for that very first rotation getting into this. And then after that, it doesn't repeat those palm mutes, it just jumps up to the E again. So we just put those palm mutes in the very first time. And then we start on this E on the seventh fret of the A string, come down to D and C on the fifth and third frets, all the way down to the second fret B. So we're just following. Come back up to the third fret, down to the second, open A, and end on the third fret C, okay? And then we play that four times. In the last two rotations of that, another lead comes in yet again, layered up on top of all those guitars. And it fades in, um, but it, it coincides with that four measures, because these are four measures, right? One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. So there's our four measures. So this little lead that comes in uh, coincides is four measures as well. And we start on the B string uh, with frets 20, 17, and zero. So it's gonna be a couple of pull-offs. But we don't hear that first measure the first time when this lead starts because it's fading in, so we miss that first measure. And we only hear the last three measures, the first rotation, and then the next couple of times that it plays, you hear all four of them. But that first measure, is we're gonna pluck 20 on the B string, pull off to 17 and then zero. Opens, okay, so it's triplets. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplets. That's our first measure. And then measures two and three, we just move down a half step to 19, 16 and open. Do two measures of that and just move back up to our starting position, 20, 17, open. And that was our fourth measure. So there's all four measures. So all together, it's gonna go like this. And then we're out of that into uh, the intro riff. And that all plays through exactly the same way as it was in the intro. So two times of that and then two times of And then to finish it off, the song ends with this walking down from A on the fifth fret of the 
low string down to G, drop your first finger, and there's a slight slowing down there. And then just tremolo strum an open E. And then, and hit that two more times. And then over, while that E is uh, being tremolo strummed, there's another lead guitar that comes in, another lead line, and really all that is doing is the E harmonic minor scale up and down. Okay, that's just E harmonic minor. Uh, so we start on the seventh fret of the A string and go seven, eight, or seven, nine, ten. And then seven, nine, ten on the D string. Uh, eight, nine on the G string. Uh, seven, eight on the B string. Back to seven. Come down to the G string, just reverse all these. Nine, eight. D string, ten, nine, seven. And E string, or A string, sorry, ten, nine, seven. Okay, now it does sound like there's a harmony in there. It's kind of like got a harmony sound. I couldn't actually isolate uh, any harmony though, but I know that a lot of tabs say that there's another guitar an octave higher. I couldn't really isolate it or hear it, but hey, let's just follow suit. If it's in there, this is what it would be doing. So I'll just show you that quick. Um, uh, the harmony line on top of that would just be an octave higher. And there's no live footage of this. They never play this live at all. So there's several different ways that we could play this an octave higher, but a nice easy way would just be to Uh, play it starting on the 14th fret of the D string. So 14, 16, 17. Move up to the G string, 14, 16, 17. 16, 17 on the B string. And then 14, 15 on the high string and then reverse that. Back to 14, 17, 16 on the B string. 17, 16, 14 on the G. 17, 16, 14 on the D. Like I said, if that's even in there, I couldn't really isolate it or hear that octave higher guitar when I really tried searching for it. Uh, but if it's in there, there you go. Uh, and then that covers all of the rhythms and uh, even some of the lead, I guess, hey? Um, but let's go back now and do the lead. Um, and we're going to have to start with the uh, little lead lick that comes in after the bridge, uh, the die by my hand section. So here that is. The lead lick coming out of the bridge section sounds like this. Okay, really quick and easy. Uh, so what we're doing is starting on the 12th fret of the A string and he starts with a palm mute on this too. Uh, so palm mute these notes, 12, 14, and 15 on the A string. Come up to the D string, 12, 14, 15. Okay. And then this is where you get the palm mute off for the rest of these notes, up to the G string 12. And then just come down to 15, 14 on the D string. And then we shift position and we just do one finger each fret kind of in a chromatic diagonal line. Just 14 on the A string, 15 on the D, 16 on the G, and 17 on the B. And that's that lead lick. And now let's do the main solo. The solo starts with a triplet figure pickup to get into it, and I had to watch a lot of live footage to figure out exactly what he was doing on the fretboard, um, because I know a lot of tabs will have you sliding up a string, something stupid like that, that's kind of hard to do. Um, but I finally found some footage where I was able to see exactly what he was doing. and. He's just putting that E up on the 12th fret. So what we're doing is going 12, 13, 15 on the B string, 
and then up to the 12th fret on the E string. And then 15 and 13 uh, for those first two beats. So one triplet, two triplet. And then you just move that up a whole step to the 14th fret of the B string and do that again. Uh, okay, so it's 14, 15, 17, up to the 14th fret of the high string, and then back to 17, 15, 14 or 1715. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet, and then we start climbing up the B string. 15, 17, 19, 17, 19, 20, uh, 19, 20, 22, and then you want to do this all as a hammer, 19, 20 to 22 on the high string. Okay, and then you bend the 22nd fret up a whole step. So, Okay, and now the bending on that is one, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, four, and. So you want to bend on one, the end of two, and four. One, two, and three, four, one, two, and three, and then four, and. On beat four there, you're going to go 22 to 19 on the high string. And then we start falling down. Very neoclassical, you know, classic sort of shred style lick. Uh, we're just falling down the scales in a sequence, a 16th note sequence. So we go 22, 20, 19, and then slide your first finger down to 17. And then we repeat that just with the four, next four notes of the scale. So 20, 19, 17, sliding down to 15. Then 19, 17, 15, sliding down to 14. Uh, 17, 15, 14, sliding down to 12. And that's as far as we're going to go down. Okay, and then we start doing some legato. He pulls off 15, 14 to 12. Come down to the B string. And we're going to up pick the 15th fret twice because we double pick that 15th fret. We go up down on the 15th fret and then pull off 14, 12. And then play that again. 15, 14, 12. And then come down to the G string. Two hits on the 14th fret. And then finish on the 12th fret. Okay? And that happens really fast. Okay, and then we get out of that with uh, some really blues, pentatonic-y type stuff that he likes to do. So, uh, hit the 14th fret on the G string. And then an oblique bend where we put our pinky on the 15th fret of the B string and bend that 14th fret with our third finger of the G string. Release it uh, so that you've got 15 and 14, just unbent, and then barred the G and the B strings. Down to the D string, 14. Up to the G string, 12, 14. And then do that oblique bend again. And then 14th fret on the G. Bar the B and the G again at the 12th fret and just, just bend it just a little bit. Uh, and then come back down to the G string, uh, or, or to the D string 14, back up to the G string 12, 14, where we're going to bend that into our next little uh, section. So uh, that whole little, that section, nice and slow, is going to look like this. Okay, then we get out of that with the 14th fret bend, up to the B string, 12, and then two pull-offs between 15 and 12. Okay? And then we replay that three times. The last time, that third time, we, we don't do two pull-offs, we just go and end on the 15th fret. And then we bend that. And then we release it up to the high string, 12. Okay, and then we get into some triplets here. Uh, okay, start on the 15th fret of the high string, pull off to 12, down to 15 on B, up to the high string 12, and then pull off from 15 to 12 on the B string. Repeat that 15 to 12 pull off on the B, down to the G string 14, back up to B 12, and then down to G 14, okay? And then we're gonna actually position shift up to the high string for, uh, into the 14th fret. And we're gonna play that 14th fret once, and then uh, hit the 17th fret with your pinky and pull off to 15, hit 14, play the 15th fret, pull off to 14, 
Come down to the B string 17, back up to 14 on the high string, up, then 17 and 15 on the B string. And then we want to pull off, hit 17, and pull off between 15 and 14. Fit pull off between 15 and 14 one more time. Come down to 16 on the G, back up to the B string 14. 16 and 14 on the G. And then we're gonna finish this off. Come down to the 12th fret, 12, 14 on D, 12 and 14 on G. And then we're gonna slide all the way up to 19 on the G. And then what we're doing is a D minor arpeggio here. Hit 18 on the B string, 17 on the high string, and then hit 20 and slide up to 22. So that is a pretty qu quick, complicated little triplet thing. So that triplet, the whole triplet thing, uh, ending at the 22nd fret slide is gonna look like this. And then we get into another arpeggio thing. This time it's an A minor arpeggio, same shape that we had on the D minor here a second ago, but we're gonna move it down to the 12th fret and this is an A minor arpeggio now and some more neoclassical shred type exercises here for you to work on. It's a sweet picking thing. So um, uh, you can think of this as just in triplets, one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. We're gonna go use a down stroke uh, to start on the G string 14. B string 13, and then high string 12. So use a down stroke for all those. Now use an up stroke to you put your pinky out on the 17th fret and use an up, and then pull off to 12. Come back to the B string 13 with an up stroke. So you've got six notes there. Okay, and now we're gonna do that four times. And then we're gonna get out of that with another little triplet thing. Okay, so we start with really quick hammer pull between 12 and 15 on the high string, and then pull off between 15 and 12 on the B string. Come down to the G string 14, back up to the B string uh, 12, pull off again between 15 to 12, pull off between 14 to 12 on the G string, come down to the D string 14, back up to the G string 12, and then oblique bend again, where your pinky's on the 15th fret of the B and your third finger is bending the 14th fret of the G string. And we do that three times. And give it some good vibrato there at the end, right? Now we get into our next little section here where all that we're doing, you don't have to worry about what notes you're hitting. It's more just make sure your picking hand is picking 16th notes. You just want to be picking one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. And we're doing this on the D string. Start right down on frets one and two. And we're going to spend four complete measures just picking 16th notes and going back and forth between our first and second fingers. So again, don't worry about hitting any note specific. You're just coming up that string, spending four complete measures, and then you wanna go, you wanna get a little hammer pull between 14 and 16 on the G string, okay? So just work your way up that string so that you end on that little thing uh, bet between 14 and 16 on the G, and then, and now that next little section is going uh, 16 on the D string, and then we go 14, 16 on the G string, 14 on the B string, pull off between 17 to 14, go down to the G string 16, 14 to 17 on the B string, and 14 on the high string. Now 17 to 14, pull off on the high string, 17 to 14, pull off on the B string, 16 on the G string, back up to 14 on the B, and pull off between 17 to 14 on B, pull off between 16 to 14 on G, 16 on D, 14 on G. And now, that, there's not really a strict timing on those two measures. The notes are just kind of rammed in there. He's really playing quite fast. And then he gets out of that, though. These next couple measures are a solid, very precise triplet uh, run. Um, so uh, I'll play it for you here just so you know how it goes, and then we'll discuss it. Okay, so we start off on the G string. 16 to 14 pull off down to 16 on the D string, back up to the G string 14, and then 16 to 14 pull off on the D. 
Repeat that 16 to 14, down to 16 on the A, back up to 14 on the D, 16 to 14 pull off on A, and then repeat that 16 to 14 on A, slide down to 12, then 14 to 12 pull off, come down to the low string 14, and then we go 12, 14, two hits on the 12th fret of the D, and we end on the 14th fret. So nice and slow again. Now we get into a nice little melodic section of this solo. So from this 14th fret on the D string, we're gonna hit that again. Go 11, 12, 14 on the G, and then back to 12, and then do an 11 to 12 hammer, back to 11, and then 12 on the D string. Okay, so then we're gonna repeat this D string, 14, 11, 12, 14 on the G, and then 12, 13, 15 on the B string, coming up to the 12th fret on the E string. Okay, the next little bit is repeat that 12th fret, slide up to 14, 15, 17, back to 15, 14, come down to 17 on the B string, and slide up to the 17th fret on that high string. Okay, then we go, the, the, these are, you're gonna have to feel some upbeats here to get this last little melodic thing right. And I use all upstrokes there, right? Three and four and one and two and three and four and so that's 17, 19 on the high string. No, this is all on the high string. 17, 19, 20, 19, 17. Shift position so that your second and third finger are playing the 14th and 15th frets. And then you wanna go 15, 14 and hammer back to 15. Okay. And now we get into some triplet pull-offs. So we want to go 15, 14, 12. Uh, that's our triplet. So just pick the 15th fret and pull off to 14 and 12. And we do two measures of that. One triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. And then we move up to the 17th, 15th, and 14th frets and do two measures of that. And then come up to 19, 17, 15, and just do one measure of that. Come up to 20, 19, 17, and do two beats of that. And the last two beats are gonna be 22, 20, and 19. And then you wanna bend the 22nd fret. Okay, and we're gonna do that how many times? One, two, three, four, five times. And then on the album, it, the uh, solo just abruptly ends and there's that overdub uh, where we're sliding down a E power chord at the 12th fret. So you would end off that solo bending that 22nd fret. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then live, Kirk just does like a random slide. Okay, so I just kind of use an upstroke and use my second finger just to kind of create a random slide effect for that uh, last little bit, and then we'll get back into the rest of the song. Um, so yeah, the last little uh, melodic bit here, uh, and the whole end of the solo, nice and slow, will look like this. And there's the whole solo. You now know how to play Creeping Death on guitar. Thanks for checking out this Creeping Death guitar lesson, guys. Remember that I'm doing every single Metallica song from every studio album. So if you want to become a Metallica expert, click like and subscribe so that you don't miss any of these videos. Also, be sure to click the link in the description with the ever-expanding playlist to catch up on any of the songs that you might have missed. And I'm going to see you next time.